I have no shame admitting this. I funded this. This actually lost money up until like mm -hmm. a year, year, year and a half ago. Lost, actually was always losing money. Always. Because I actually, I was all, I was putting like my own personal money in to actually run it. Because right. because of my day job and how much time it consumed, plus I have a family, I knew for it to be successful or if I wanted it to be successful, there was no way I could do it all myself. And are you right. really happy doing what you're doing? And if you're not, what would you do differently? And what is your purpose in life? I think, and, and again, that could be a question that somebody could just ask themselves. Um, because, you know, somebody, you know, for me, for example, like I've gone through, you know, a lot of ups and downs over the last, you know, several months or a couple years of my life. And it made me rethink all of those things. It made me really rethink, um, what am I doing? What am I doing this for? Who am I doing it for? What's my purpose in life? You know, what are my passions? What are my passions? Uh, where am I gaining energy? Where am I losing energy? Who am I surrounding myself with? And I had to hire people to do some, you know, different pieces of this whole puzzle because it, I, I would never be where I'm at today if it weren't for my team. But I think, I think if people are just more patient and understand like, hey, I got to reinvest money back into this to continually grow it, re invest in people. I think that's another huge thing that's so underestimated is investing in people. Um, because at the end of the day, like people that work alongside me, like they're not doing it for mm -hmm. the money. They're doing it because they believe in it. They believe in me. We believe in each other. And we all are doing this for a bigger purpose. Like this, like there's a bigger picture. It's a bigger purpose. Like, you know, it's, it's not just, oh, we're not just, you know, doing this, you know, for fun and oh, okay. Yeah. We're making a couple bucks. Like I believe that we're building this for like a bigger picture. There's something bigger down the road to come, you know, with this and we're just going to keep building and building and building. And, and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we, we have goals and we have things in mind and where we mm -hmm. want to go and all that. But I think, um, I think people just need to be a little bit more Episodes. patient. Yeah. If I like fire round gave you five tools, whether it's equipment or AI, what, what are your like top five tools for podcasting? Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today we have on Bill, do I say it, Corcoran? Got it. Corcoran Jr. Oh my gosh, I get bonus points for that. I always mess yep. up people's names. Uh, but Bill, it was introduced to me by my good friend Mondo, who has also been on the podcast before. And I'm super excited to get into marketing strategy, you know, different tactics, kind of podcasting, all the different stuff, because Bill's got a lot of experience. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say, Bill. And if you could introduce yourself, I think that'd be a good start. For sure. Yeah. So, well, first of all, Laura, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And of course, as you just said, to echo what you said, shout out to Mondo Salavanti uh, for introducing us. Uh, he's, you know, he's become a good, good friend of mine, uh, you know, as of lately, and uh, he's a super cool dude. So shout out to him. But yeah, so uh, I, uh, I recently, uh, just over the last couple months, I, I left my full time day. I'll give you kind of like the thirty second little thing about me. So yeah, let's get the elevator pitch. Yep, yep, yep. So for the last twelve years of my life, I worked for my family's printing and packaging company. I worked in outside sales for the company. And over the last five years, I, I got into content creation slash podcasting just as like a little side hustle, side gig. Actually, when I say side hustle, it really, it didn't even start off as a side hustle to, um, to really make money. I just, it, it just, I was telling you right kind of before we came on, I just kind of sort of started it by accident and didn't really have any intention of like, of really, of any, of it really going anywhere per se, or actually really making money. Um, just, I guess, because at the time I didn't, I didn't know really well anything about podcasting really. I mean, you know content creation, a little bit of the, you know, I've managed some social media stuff here and there, but, um, but yeah, so, so of, uh, out, out of that 12 years working for the family business, I, for, for five, five, the last five years of that, I was doing podcasting, you know, on, uh, just on the side of nights and weekends. And I saw, I saw some potential in it and, you know, I started to monetize it fairly, fairly early on in my podcast journey, probably like about like half a year, maybe, maybe like three quarters of a way into, into like a year of doing it, I started to monetize it. Um, and when I, you know, when I saw the opportunity mm. and then once I, once I started monetizing it, that I'm like, Oh, okay, well, wait a second. Like I can make this much money. And if I really, I really only need to grow it like X amount more to sort of replace my daily or my, you know, my regular, you know, day job income. 
And I was like, you know what? I think I kind of like this better. And, you know, the more I got into it, the more it grew, the more exciting it got, the more people I met, the more it just, it really, it kind of launched me like all around the world, so to speak, uh, you know, digitally. And I started meeting all these different people and just doing really cool things. I'm like, man, like, this is like a lot of fun like this, you know, it's, and, and then, you know, so fast, fast forward to a couple months ago, you know, I, I ultimately, you know, ends up leaving my, leaving my day job and then doing, you know, podcasting slash content creation uh, full time. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah, that's so cool. I don't know how much Mono told you about me, but I left my job in consulting like nine or 10 months ago to start doing content creation full time as well. And it's just taking that leap of faith is so scary. How did that feel like for you? Yeah, you know, so um, it, it, it was planned, it was well thought out, you know, as, as I said, like, because I've been doing, I've been doing it on the side for years. And mm -hmm. it was my goal eventually to leave and do a full time. But yes, 100%. It was scary. It's still scary. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm out of my own right. now only for a few months doing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it is, it's, it was a, a few years ago when I finally like made the decision like, okay, hey, like, I don't want to do that anymore, aka my day job and do this. It was honestly probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Uh, and I know it sounds like a little like almost exaggerated, but mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was working for my family's, my family's business, which you know, has been been around for 84 years, uh, you know, so that's, it's, it's a real long time, you know, we have a really, we had a really great footprint in, you know, our local community, nationally, globally, you know, I, I built relationships with, you know, thousands of people all around the country uh, for the last 12 years. So like, you know, leaving there, like, you know, obviously, like, as much as I wanted to leave there was also there was there was a lot that weighed on me and, you know, multiple right. aspects, but but yeah, I mean, it was it's scary, like leaving that, leaving that paycheck, like that steady income paycheck. But I think at the end of the day, when you look at the upside, like, like everybody always says like, oh, like everybody looks at, a lot of people look at like, what could go wrong? Well, I look at like, what could go right? And it's right. like, there's so much more, in my opinion, upside and potential to, you know, doing something on your own. Of course, you gotta, you know, you gotta have the entrepreneurial spirit. Like if you don't have that, I feel like you probably wouldn't make it. But, you know, for me, I've, I've always had the entrepreneurial spirit. I worked in sales, you know, for the last 12 years. So 80% of my paycheck was commission. So I, you know, essentially mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm, I was, I was used to my whole life. Um, you know, not, I don't want to say not having a, uh, uh, it's not that, you know, obviously it's not guaranteed cause it's commission, but I did really well. I excelled in my, my role. Um, and because of that, you know, obviously I, I made good money, you know, in, you know, with, with a job, even though 80% of it was commission, but I wasn't really scared of as much. I mean, for me, you know, like other people who just like work a salary job, that's probably got, that's probably scarier. If you're somebody that just works on a, a job, that's like just purely salary, leaving that kind of job is probably a little scarier than what, it, what it would have been like for somebody you know, like me, because like I said, I'm used to not really having that guaranteed income. And it's like every month my pay is like a little different because of commission being commission based. So, you know, for me, it was a little bit easier in that sense, kind of like, instead of, I joke now and I say, instead of, you know, I used to work 80% commission. Now I'm hundred percent commission. Cause it's all me at the end of the day. It's whatever, you know, whatever, you know, I bring in, we bring in as a company, like, you know, I'm essentially earning, you know, um, it's, it, it all falls on me at the end, at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, but it was still scary. You know, I, I, you know, I'm married. I, we have, we have two kids. Um, you know, our, our youngest is, is only four months old. So like, we have, yeah, so we have a three, a three year old, almost three year old and, you know, a four month old. And, you know, so yeah, I mean, it was definitely, it, it was scary. And like I said, it still is, but, um, I've, I've learned to embrace the unknown a lot more lately, just from a lot of experiences that I've had in the last few months, um, of my life. And I think the more that people just un embrace the unknown and really put themselves out there, make themselves a little more vulnerable. I, I think there's there's so much growth to be had personally and professionally if you just take a little bit more risk than maybe you thought you could and just get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I know it sounds so cliche, but it's so <laughs> true. And you know, I'm 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 a case in point, you know, like uh it's it's I think it's just a matter of really putting yourself out there and just knowing what you want and going for it. And I think at the end of the day, like if you do that and you really like a lot of people say like, oh yeah, like I want to build the life I want. But like, until you really, really do it, like it was a, it was a game changer for me. Like I feel now like doing this on my own, like, I, I don't know, there's a, there's like a weight of the world off my shoulders where I feel like, you know, because I'm fully 100% in control of my destiny. And I think ultimately like, that's what I wanted in life. And I want to, you know, I just, you know, want to just really build the life that I wanted 
build and do the things I want to do, work with the people I want to work with. And, um, you know, it's not easy, but it's also, it's hard, but I wouldn't want, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I think, you know, it's, it's the ultimate reward is being able to live life on your own terms, a hundred percent. I feel like you said so many interesting things there. I'm like, what do I want to pick up on first? I think, I think the sales side is really interesting for me because obviously you have all this experience in sales, like years and years of experience, but for someone just starting out in the sales life, right? It's so much rejection. It's so many like doors in your face. And if you're not used to it, you probably take it personally as well. So if you could walk us back to the you who started selling in your family's business and walk us through the hard parts of that and how you overcame them and what selling looks like for you now, that would be really cool. Yeah. So um, obviously there's a lot, lot to it, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. but I think, uh, you know, obviously having some training when you first start, but also too, and like I've said this just about like podcasting and everything, like going, going into something new, like a little bit naive, I think is, you don't want to be too naive, right? Cause you don't want to be fooled or have the wool pulled over your eyes. However, I, I, th I often think that if you like over, like if you're starting anything new, whether it's, you know, a sales career or, any, or anything, just content creation, or you're taking up a new hobby. I think if you like, if you do so much research and you look into it too much, you end up kind of sort of talking yourself out of it. Cause you, you see it, you start to see like the negative talk of people online, or you start sharing it with maybe some close family and friends and not that they don't support you, but they're like, I don't know if you should do that. And then obviously then all of a sudden the stuff starts to turn to negative. But for me with the sales thing, like, you know, you know, going back like 12 years when I first started out, like it was, um, it was a grind and it took me, it took me like a long time really to, I'll say like build like a base, right. To build like a base of clients and have that, you know, and, and really like, you know, just starting out like you don't really make a, you know you don't make a lot of money like and you have to you really have to go into sales with the right attitude and the right mindset that you're not going to make uh really a lot of money anytime soon in the beginning like unless you get like real lucky or you're some kind of superstar right but you know i i'm i'm a big long-term thinker and you know i look at it like okay hey you might have to struggle for a couple years as you're kind of like learning and figuring it out and and like I said, building, building, building the relationships, building that client base. And then once you, once you really start to develop, you know, clients and hone in your skills, your sales skills and your network and, you know, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's, it's, it's so, it's so, it's, it, it's really, when you break it down, it's really that simple. Like everybody thinks that like sales needs to be like super complicated and it's really not like it, it, it's, it, you just gotta be like a good person do the right things and, and, and just always like have your clients back. And I think that's so important. And I, I've built relationships with people that like, you know, even when I left, even when I left my day job, like I, I had clients that'd be like, Hey, Bill, like, what are you doing now? Where'd you go? Like, can we buy from you? Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you selling that's now? Cool. Because like, yeah, yeah, build those relationships. And you know, when you, when you have relationships with people like that for over a decade, like people, it, it's really cool for me to see now, like, you know, those relationships from those people, like really, it, it just, it, it continues on, which is, which is cool. And to know that, you know, when you, when you, you know, you put in, when I put in for the amount of work and time that I put in for the last like 12 years, building those relationships to know that some of these people still want to do business with me in some sense, in some aspect, it, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a really cool feeling, you know? Um, yeah. I hope I, I hope I answered the question. If I didn't, please give me a follow up Cause I kind of just like went in a few different directions there with that. Well, I, I definitely think that that is really interesting. And I also want to kind of pick up on the fact that you said this took you 12 years. That is a theme that I mentioned with the people um, who come onto the podcast, because most of the people who I come on the podcast, or who come on my podcast, who have been kind of like, what's the, the reputation they have is like, as an expert in their field, they've been doing it for a long time. And our culture I find it kind of toxic. People think that you can get success so fast. Toxic's not the right. I, I don't like the word toxic, but I'm going to use it anyways. Like this took you 12 years. And at the end of the 12 years is when your reputation has truly started to pay off where people are like, how can I buy from you? Because you have proved that you are good for your word above and beyond in the past. Right. I want to pivot a teeny bit, if that's okay to talking about podcasts specifically, because I obviously started this podcast back in January. And before then I'd been a host of a podcast for a charity in London. 
And from what I've seen in people, because I actually got my first big client um, from a podcast. He was on my first episode, Dan Ariely. Like, you can look it up. He's a three-time New York Times bestselling author. And I, I find that there are kind of, again, three reasons why someone would start a podcast, which is like for business development or because they just they have something that they really want to say like something that they want to talk about or it's like part of a content strategy like have that be the long form video that helps you know spread out the rest of their content so for you am i missing out on any reasons that someone would start a podcast and like who are the types of people that you see coming to you for podcasts yeah so no i don't, I don't think you really missed anything and you know what, and i always say like because everybody always asks like Oh, like, and listen, like everybody has a different reason, like as to why, just as you just said, like why you started a podcast. Like for me, you know, let me just first actually say this. So there's nothing wrong with starting a podcast purely to make money, or there's nothing wrong with starting a podcast purely to have it serve as, like you said, like business development or a sales funnel for whatever it is that you're doing. Like there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's just, I think at the end of the day, as long as your content is genuine and authentic, it'll work. If you're starting a Mm. podcast purely to make money and you know, and, and it's, you know, operating as, you know, biz, biz dev for your, for your, your company, but your content isn't authentic. Well, eh, then it's going to look a little awkward in my opinion. Cause it's just, you know, as I'm just, I'm a big believer in just having pure, good, organic, authentic content, because honestly, like, especially nowadays, like people could just see right through it. And, you know, when I see that stuff, I'm like, ah, next, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of like, you know, I'll say like in, in our area, like we're in, I'm in the Northeastern part of Pennsylvania. So, I, you know, in our area here, I love this area and I don't mean to knock it, but like our, our, our town, like we're a little bit techno, techno, technology wise, this area where, where, where we're from, it's always a little bit behind, I'll say like some of the bigger city mm. or, or anywhere else in the world for that matter. Right. So specifically in this area, it, it, you know, again, for, I've been doing this for like five years and it, it took like almost the full five years for I'll say my area and this town and the people and businesses to kind of really see more value in it. Not that they didn't see the value in it from the beginning. Cause you know, some did. Right. But now that like, it's really, it's finally caught up, I think mostly in this area um, that now people are embracing it a lot more, obviously in other bigger, you know, uh, you know, cities around the country and around the world, it's been embraced and it's nothing new. Right. Like I always tell everybody that like, I'm not doing anything new. Podcasting isn't new. I'm not, I don't claim to be, you know, a pioneer really in any sense, but, um, but yeah, I mean, like we've, we've really honed, I'll say like, so again, like we, I started out with just my show. Now we've, we've developed other shows. We're taking on other clients, helping them produce podcasts, you know, whether it's an individual entrepreneur doing it, who's like somebody like a business coach and they're like self-employed and they just want to launch a podcast, you know, for themselves, like, or if it's a, or if it's, you know, a, a $30 million, you know, nonprofit that says like, Hey, we want to, you know, we want to have a community centric focused podcast, like, and we can work with somebody like that too. So I think there's so much opportunity in podcasting. Um, you know, and I think a lot of people look at it. One of the things that a lot of people said to me all the time, like, Bill, how, how, how do you think you're going to stand out? Like with your show specifically or, or any shows that you create and everyone's like, Oh, there's so many podcasts out there. There's millions, like you're never going to make it. And it's like the way like, st- this is just statistics. Like, this is just facts. I'm sure you've probably heard this before too, but 90% of podcasts don't make it past episode three. So like, really? Yeah. Yeah. 90% don't make it past episode three. And then another 90% don't make it past episode 20. So think right. about that. So think about like, if anyone wants to start a podcast, I don't care what the topic is. I don't care where you're at in the world. You can get rid of 90% of the competition just by getting past three episodes. Like right. it's, it's, and those are facts. Like, and again, it's not my opinion. Um, anyone can look it up. If you Google the, you know, the podcast statistics, like, you know, how, how, I don't know, how far do, you know, do new podcasts make it? You'll find it. Like, and honestly, it's, it's so again, when you, when you really think about that, that 90% don't make it past the third episode. And then if you make it another 17 episodes, then you get rid of 90% of those people. And it's like, mm. you're already in the top couple percent in the world yeah. just by default, just because you stuck with it and you're consistent. And I think that's, I think, been part of like our success here is just being consistent with it. Do we get millions of views? No. Do we wish we did? Of course we do. But at the end of the day, you know, we're, we love what we do. We're putting out great content, authentic content. We're helping a lot of people. uh, And obviously we're having a lot of fun doing it. Uh, But I think there's so much, there's tremendous opportunity for anyone to start a podcast. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. And, And essentially, if you do it the right way, 
um, you really position yourself as a thought leader and a leader or an expert in your field, kind of as, you know, as what you just said before. And you, know, you put yourself out there and you really, you know, you, you know, whatever it is, whatever the topic is like that you're, you know, you're the expert on like, and you, you talk about it for week, week in and week out for, you know, how, you know, for years, like you just, you're going to become that go-to person for whatever, it, mm-hmm. whatever, whether it's, whether it's knowledge, like you're learning something or whether it's just pure entertainment, either way, people are going to look to you as like the source for whatever is that your niche might be. Right. And mm-hmm. I think there's so much opportunity for businesses, individuals, even athletes, like younger kids in college now with NIL, like all that stuff. It just, I think there's so much more opportunity in the podcast space than people realize. And I also, I forget the, I forget the exact stat. I'll, I'm going to try to maybe throw out a number and hopefully I don't butcher it. But I think the podcast industry, like right now is valued somewhere around like 25 billion. And I think, really? in the, yeah, 25 billion as of, as of uh, 2023. And I think the latest stat that I read, I think in the next like eight to 10 years, it's it, the value of it is supposed to go up to, I think about $130 million over the next like eight to 10 years. So, I mean, oh, that's, wow. you know, it's, it's growing pretty rapidly, you know, and obviously there's, there's going to be millions of people that start podcasts over the next several years. But then just like I said before, about 90% of people dropping off. There's also going to be millions that drop off yeah. and, and, you know, people look at it like, oh my God, it's so, it's too saturated. And it's like, yeah, it is. But if you just, if you just stick with it, like you're going to be one of the last man or woman standing. And it's, it's really, you know, there, there's, there's the quote that, um, you know, hustle beats talent when talent mm. doesn't hustle. And that's so true. And, and that could be applied to anything. Like, you know, you just hustle and put in the work and stay consistent. People will follow, they'll stick with you. They're going to know that you're serious and you can make it. It's just, it's just a matter of how, how bad do you want it? How consistent and how disciplined you're going to be. And I think if you do all that and just have that authenticity, consistency and discipline day in and day out, you could be successful, not just podcasting, but like literally anything. Yeah, that's actually so true because I started running a lot in January, like, and now I'm at the point where I run a 5k six days a week. Actually, on Saturday, I I run longer, like I ran a 10k and just by running, like, I I think it's the same as the podcasting thing. Like, there's only like, like, like less than 5% of the world who can run a 10k. And that's kind of crazy, right? Because you think that running is so saturated. There are all these people who run, but then suddenly you're in the top percentile just because you keep on going. You stuck with it. Exactly. Yeah. And I find it really interesting as well that you were talking about um, views because for me, right, the main, a lot of, for a lot of people, the reason that they want to start a podcast or start a business is because they want to make money. Right. And not all views are created equal. Like, let's say, uh, you're a, a CPA like Mondo or something like that. And you've got like this really interesting niche in, with, with dietitians who make over $2 million a year like or something like that. If you can get like 10 dietitians who make over $2 million a year to listen to your podcast and you convert one of them, like that's probably a lot of money coming in the bank. So can we talk about a little bit how you kind of, measure quality in a podcast like the quality of views and the quality of leads for your clients yeah i think i think it just has to like feel right for you right that one of the things i always i say to myself i say i say this in my head all the time like before i ever create any piece of content like even right now even right now what i'm about to say is exactly what i i'm thinking even before coming on your show i the way i look at it is like you know uh what kind of value am i going to provide by creating this piece of content just like me being on your podcast right now, I think to myself like, hey, I'm going on this show. You know, obviously not everyone's going to find every single thing you or I said valuable. But if there's one thing that somebody takes away from this, it's a win. So I always, mm-hmm. I approach everything with any piece of content and I share this with everybody else too. Like you got to go into it thinking like, you know, what, what is, what am I saying right now? And is somebody going to get value out of this? And if the answer is no, then right. I mean, change it up a little bit. Like, because again, like, you know, obviously, you know, for, you know, if, if it's like entertainment purposes, I mean, obviously it's entertainment, but there's still value in entertainment, you know, but, right. you know, a show like, like mine, for example, it's like business entrepreneurship, right. And people are coming to that, maybe not necessarily for the entertainment, because do we laugh every once in a while? Like, is there, is there obviously I, you know, interesting guests, things like that. But at the end of the day, like people are coming for like the, either motivation, inspiration, the knowledge to learn something new. It's like, so I always approach everything 
And I tell all, all of our clients too, like whenever you're doing something, always think about like, try to try to put yourself in the, li- the, the listener mm-hmm. or the viewer's shoes. And whether it's podcast or not, just any piece of content, is somebody going to gain value from this? And if the answer right. is no, well then like, again, like I said before, like maybe rethink it, take a different approach. But again, I always approach everything, you know, whatever I do, you know, try to be intentional about it and, and make sure that you're providing some value. Cause otherwise at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we can sit here and BS all day long, but like, where's the value in that? You know, unless, unless somebody just finds you and I super entertaining, like, you know, it's like, I'll, <laughs> you know, like you could just go on Netflix and just put something on in the background then, you know? So mm-hmm. I think as long as, as long as you're providing value and, and, and going into it with that, with that mindset, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, I love that. And something that I would love to ask you as well. Um, whenever I post something, I heard at some point the rule that you should try to put something out that you would pay five dollars for. And then I was like, well, it's twice as hard to make it now. So let's think ten dollars instead. So I wanted to get into the real nitty gritty of podcasting advice. So say you've got someone who's just starting a podcast. They want to DIY what do you recommend? How do you go through all of that? Let's talk about setup, equipment, all that sort of stuff, scripting. How would you do it? So, I mean, like, I'll just use me as an example. Like when I first started out, like I literally just, I, I bought uh, the Zoom H6 recorder off, off Amazon, super easy, right? So like you only need like a few things. And, and, and that's, I mean, I spent like 600 bucks, by the way. When I first started my show, I made an investment of like $600 for like, it was like three mics, a recording, you know, device and, you know, a couple of boom arms. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like, so, and, uh, and you can, pro- you can do it even cheaper than that. Like you could, mm. you could, if you really want, if you say like, oh, Hey, you don't have, if you don't have 600 bucks, fine, that's okay. There's, there's other, there's other things like you don't need, you don't need the $300 mic like I have. Right. You don't. And that's the other thing. I think people also think that they need to they need to have the best of the best right in your star and you don't. Mm. And I'm the perfect example of that too. Again, you may not realize because you're, you know, unless you scroll back like years of my content, you, you probably only, you like look at my content now and you see my content as good as it is with the best equipment and it looks great. It may look perfect to some people, right? But it took us five years to get here. And I think when somebody's just starting out, like you could literally, there's, there's, you know, just go on YouTube and just, just do a quick little search how to start a podcast for free. There's so many resources and so many tools. I mean, like Riverside, for example, I forget what it costs, probably 30 bucks a month or something. You can- 15, 15. There you go, 15, even less, Stupid right? Stupid so, cheap. Exactly. So like, you if even if, even, you don't even need a computer. You could do it on a phone. Like, you know, and, and some people are always like, oh, well, the quality is not gonna be that good. It's like, hey, do what you can with what you got and just right. get started. That's my, my biggest piece of advice for anybody starting anything, especially anything new, is just get started. Put yourself out there, create some content, tweak it as long as, as, as you go along. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. I've done over 200 episodes and my stuff still isn't perfect. I, I know mm-hmm. that I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. The next guy is not going to be, and that's just the way it is. But that's, that's what podcasting is. And that's what people like about it because it's not perfect. It's not, it's not your highly produced show on Netflix. Like it's, it's again, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I love like the down and dirty, real, raw conversations, genuine deep dive conversations. That's the type of stuff like I'm into. So that's why I like creating the content that I create because it, genu- it, it interests me. And I have a genuine interest in just in people, why they do what they do, how they do it. But really, like I said, to answer your question, like I, I knew nothing. All I did was I when I first started, I just went on Amazon and I just typed in like podcast setup or podcast. I don't even know what I did. I don't even know what I searched, but I just bought a couple of mics I looked, I just looked online, read a couple like blogs that I found. Um, and I just like, was like, okay, I'll just buy these few things. And then I had a, a, just a friend of a friend that DM'd me because I, I posted about it on social. Like, hey, I want to start and start a podcast. And then a friend DM'd me. The hardest part for me at, at when I first started was all the other stuff, like all the editing, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I've never had to edit anything because from day one, I, like I said, I had a, a friend of a friend that DM'd me and was like, hey, he goes, I edit a podcast for this university that I'm at, uh, that I'm a grad student at. He's like, hey, I saw your starting one. He goes, I'll help. You. He's like, I'm willing to help you um, edit yours for free to get started for X amount of episodes. And then we can, t- if you're happy with me and with what we're doing, then we can talk about a rate afterwards. And I'm like, hey, man, that sounds great. I really appreciate that. So, you know, he provided some value to me. Obviously, I was just getting started. I didn't have any money to pay anyone. He pro- he provided some value by st- helping me start, start it off by doing it for free. And 
you know, in turn, he got the experience doing it. He was a grad student at the time. And mm -hmm. um, so we were both learning. It was like a learning experience. And like I said, like when, 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 when we first started, it wasn't like, oh, hey, I'm going to make this a full time career. Like in the back of my mind, did I have like a little tiny bit in the back of my mind that thought to myself like, oh, man, it'd be so cool to like one day just like to do this like full time, maybe a, a tiny, tiny bit. But when I first started, it was like, ah, I don't know, we'll, we'll just see where it goes. We'll see what happens. And I think too many people get caught up in the, oh, I need the best equipment. Oh, it has to look the best. Oh, I don't like the way I looked. I don't like the way I sounded. You got to put all that aside because if you don't, you're number one, you're probably, you're never going to get started. Put it that way. Just, just, you know. Whether you, whether you buy some equipment and, you know, some decent stuff to get started or not, or whether you do something like, again, you can just use the, the mic on your phone. You can use the mic on your computer. There's, there's so many things you can do to literally start it for free. Um, and, or, you know, what? if somebody's watching and listening to this right now, send me a DM, like I'll gladly yeah. shoot, shoot you some links, shoot you some resources that maybe I found. Like there's all kinds of AI tools that like we use now to like help with stuff and you know, like I'm obviously I've become very knowledgeable in this space, you know, because, you know, like we've, you know, we've been doing this day in and day out. And now we're producing, uh, she's like, we're producing probably like five different shows besides my own right now. Um, you know, us, you know, our team here. So, um, and yeah, that's it. I think just, um, like I said, like there's so many ways to get started for free. If you, if you have a little bit of budget and you want to throw some, you know, throw some money by and get some, get some starter equipment. Great. You know, do that. And but like I said, like there's just there's so much out there. There's so many resources. Use me as a resource. I'm sure like you obviously you're a resource. If I'm sure if anyone asked you, you can obviously give people some pointers as well. But, you know, I'm I'm of the mindset that I want to see everybody succeed. I'm you know, I'm in this space. I don't look at anybody as competition. There's enough to go around for everybody. I don't care if you're right next door to me or halfway around the world. I want to support everybody and I want to see everybody succeed. And uh, I just love doing this. I love doing what I do. I just, I, I love having these types of conversations. And if I could be of, of any help to anybody, please let me know. I love your attitude towards that because I'm kind of the same. I'm like, we can always collaborate. We can always, you know, be helping other people. And I actually do have a video on how to start a podcast as well. I'll put it in the description just for anyone who's like a real beginner. But to your point, one of my mentors actually says to me all the time, he's like, don't get analysis paralysis, just do it. You mm -hmm. can always iterate later. And yes. I remember there was this one person who, who was actually my trainer when I was in London. And he was telling me while we were training, right? He was like, oh, I want to start posting more on Instagram. And so I like to follow up with people. So I followed up with him a few months later. I'm like, do you need any help? He goes, well, I haven't done anything yet because I want to buy this $1,000 camera right and i was like you don't need that just start right this this episode right now i showed you before we started filming and i'll show people at home yeah. so this is like a one thousand dollar camera i'm not even using this right now i'm using my it's, iphone yeah. 14 pro like just because it's easier to set up the camera quality is still good there's this little microphone thing that i have right here 16 dollars on amazon yep, like i'm still <laughs> using this and yeah and i and i have the thousand dollar thing right there and i just yeah. find it just as okay to use this. Case in point, you're a case in point right there. Like, you know, like again, you don't, you don't, you don't need the perfect stuff. And just like you said, like there's gonna be times where even once you do have all the, all the good expensive stuff, you're still going to sometimes revert and use the other stuff. Like, because like you said, just ease of use, it's faster, it's easier. Like it's just, it's convenient. So, and like, like you said, like, I think, you know, don't wait, to, like you said, just like, you know, he said like, oh, I want to wait because I don't have a thousand dollars yet. Like you don't need it. You don't need that. Like yeah. at all. Like, you know, I, I, I made it like, so think of think, how about this? I spent six, that's $600 that I spent my initial investment, that equipment, I didn't upgrade my equipment for two mm. years. So think about that. I spent $600 in that equipment. And to be honest, I, I could have still kept using those mics. I just decided, and you know, we had some money, all the money, by the way, that I've ever made with this over the last five years, I, I still have yet to take a paycheck from it. I invested, reinvested any and all profit we've ever made with this, this show. I think that's the other thing too, that a lot of people like think like, oh, I'm going to get rich quick. And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> that's, that's just, that's not reality. If you think that you're delusional. Um, but like, that's the other thing that, that 600 bucks, that, that equipment, again, it, it could have lasted me longer. I just decided to buy new mics, but I did, I did a hundred episodes on that initial $600 investment. A hundred. Think about mm. it. Like. So many people think like, oh my God, like, you know, it's like 
six hundred dollars divided divided by a hundred episodes. When you do the math, I'm terrible at math, and I'm not going to try to do it. But like the the the, the dollar amount into per it's episode, six. <laughs> it, it's pennies. Like yeah. So like again, like it's so it's you know even even if you spent three hundred six hundred to start something like this, like it's going to last you a long time. I still have the original recording device. It's sitting over here next to me. Like, I still have the original recording device that I originally bought. Like that's cool. Way, I'm still using it. Like the only thing that's different is is my is my mics and the cameras. And I mean, and I have a better a different studio now. Like I used to be in a different place. I ended up investing in a in a in a property. Like I actually bought a commercial building, which is where I'm at now. I'm actually this is actually my studio. Like my background mm-hmm. right now. This is actually the uh, you know my studio here where I record my show at. Um, but uh, but again, like it's it's so crazy when you think about it, that that six hundred dollars went that far and it could have gone further i still actually, actually i still have those mics i actually just have them kind of on the shelf as just like a little like cool little memory piece you know but if we really want to i could plug those in at any time and start and start using them like we still have them they still work <laughs> and they're still pretty good like they're not like most people think like you need to have the 300 hundred dollar sure mic you don't you don't mm-hmm. you really don't you know as long as your content's good that's the thing that's good. yeah Good quality content and consistency. You know, if if it's and when I say quality content, I mean like the actual conversation, not necessarily like, hey, if the video is a little fuzzy or cuts out here and there, like honestly, it's not the end of the world. Do we want it to be better? Sure, we all do, right? As creators. But at the end of the day, like you're having good conversations, like it doesn't need, you know, the difference between the hundred dollar mic and the three hundred dollar mic, you know, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna make make or break, you know, uh, get gaining listeners and followers. Like, you know, you just you just have to take it slow and be patient. I think so many people, with anything, I think so many people are are too impatient. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, myself, like what I've done, what we have built here over the last five years, I'm. It's so funny, and my wife will laugh when she listens and watches this, and my mom too, because my my wife, and my mom are my like my two biggest fans. They watch and listen to everything I put out. But I. That's so cute. I'm besides this, like I'm like the most impatient person in the world. Like I have like, I have like no patience and I, I'm, I'm always working on that. And that's like one thing for me that I'm always working on. I, I have no problem like admitting, you know, like, you know, shortcomings like that, but patience for me, I've always struggled with that, especially as an entrepreneur. Cause we want to go, 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 go. And we want to make right. progress and we want to build and you know, we want to keep going. But for me, like, for, you know, like doing this for the last five years, I've been extremely patient. And I think because I've, I've been so patient with this, it's enabled me to excel to the level that I have. Like I didn't, you know, you know, could I, could I have made thousands of dollars and just put it in my own pocket? Yeah, I could have over the last five years, hundred percent. I could have, but I didn't. And I was patient and I was fortunate enough that, you know, I, I utilized my day job, you know, my income there for the longest time to be completely honest. And I have no shame admitting this. I funded this. This actually lost money up until like mm-hmm. a year, year, year and a half ago. Lost, actually was always losing money. Always. Because I actually, I was, all, I was putting like my own personal money in to actually run it. Because, right. because of my day job and how much time it consumed, plus I have a family, I knew for it to be successful or if I wanted it to be successful, there was no way I could do it all myself. And I had to hire people to do some, you know, different pieces of this whole puzzle because it, I, I would never be where I'm at today if it weren't for my team. So I always like want to give them credit and give them a shout out for that because, you know, I think it's, it's foolish to think that you can build anything substantial or worthwhile by yourself. Of course, it's going to start as just you, but then as you grow, you build a team, you build a culture, you surround yourself with the best people and boom, you're like, then you're, then, then, then you're onto something, you know? And, mm. you know, like I said, like for me, like, it was just like, it was never about the money. And that's the mistake I think I made in my, I'll say my past life was like, I was always chasing the money. I was always like, ah, oh, like, I just want to, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, I just want to, I want to make that big, I want to make that big salary. I want to, I want to make a lot of money and blah, blah, blah. And not to like be showy or anything like that. I don't know what it was. I was just always, always thought like, oh, like I want to make a lot of money and maybe that's success. And you know, like as I've gone through life, I've really, I've learned so much more about myself, about that. And like I said, like with this, I didn't go into it making money or, or thinking that I was going to make a lot of money. I was extremely patient. I reinvested all the profits back in, still am to this day. Um, obviously, I'm going to be taking a paycheck in the near future. But at the same time, like you have to really, you really need to like understand that like you're going to go a long time 
without making money. And if you can't do that or can't handle that, then maybe it's not the right thing. If you're trying to do it full time, I'm saying like, if you're trying to do it full time, like me, you can't, you can't just think you're going to make a lot of money. Like unless you're, you're somebody famous and you go viral, then maybe, but that's not the reality for 99% of people, right? Like they're, they're, they're going to be like people like you and I, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, there's, there's obviously plenty of ways of monet- to monetize this stuff and to start offering other services in conjunction with what you're doing, things that are parallel. But I think, I think if people are just more patient and understand like, Hey, I got to reinvest money back into this to continually grow it, re- invest in people. I think that's another huge thing that's so underestimated is investing in people. Um, because at the end of the day, like people that work alongside me, like they're not doing it for mm-hmm. the money. They're doing it because they believe in it. They believe in me. We believe in each other. And we all are doing this for a bigger purpose. Like this, like there's a bigger picture. It's a bigger purpose. Like, you know, it's, it's not just, oh, we're not just, you know, doing this, you know, for fun and, oh, okay. Yeah. We're making a couple bucks. Like I believe that we're building this for like a bigger picture. There's something bigger down the road to come, you know, with this and we're just going to keep building and building and building. And, and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we, we have goals and we have things in mind and where we Mm want to go and all that. But I think, um, I think people just need to be a little bit more patient. Yeah. And I love the focus on people as well. I feel like you truly have, like you said at the beginning, but I think that all of us have like one or two really key talents. And for you, definitely, it's just that entrepreneurial spirit and the way that you treat other people. Like, and I can already tell, like in your personal life and, you know, just everything that you do, you really try to do right by people. And that in itself is such a gift that I, I hope you hold on to that because that is so I special. I can just, yeah, I get... I get good vibes. Um, <laughs> I, do, yeah. I, try to, I try to bring the good vibes everywhere I go. I mean, like, I really do because I think too many people are too negative all the time. Yeah, and I get that, but nah, good vibes. Cool. Uh, I'm not like a I, – I feel like it's a fine line between there's always going to be something better at the end of the line, but at the same time, we shouldn't fear – or give in to sadness and stress too much. Like, it's okay that it's there, but it's just more of a signal more than something. Like, you don't have to be stressed about your stress. And I think that's what a lot of people do nowadays. Um, I just wanted to pick up on a few more things. So you've mentioned a lot of tools throughout this episode. So if I, like, fire round gave you five tools, whether it's equipment or AI, what, what are your, like, top five tools for podcasting? Uh, so one of them, um, is, is podium and I, and I don't know the exact like website, but if you just like Google, like podium podcast, you'll probably find the website. So that, that AI tool I use, um, it does like, it's like an all in one. It creates show notes. It creates titles. It has chat GPT built right into it. Um, it has uh, titles, show notes, um, timestamps, the entire transcript mm-hmm. of an episode. I forget what it costs per month, but so minimal that I don't even know that like, that's how minimal it costs. Yeah. That saves me like hours every week, um, you know, because we're producing so many shows. I, I, it's, it works, it works. It's not perfect. Okay. So like, because it is, it is AI, right. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good to the point that mm-hmm. I could, some of the other shows that we produce, I could take the, the, the content, upload it to that platform. And, you know, in 15 minutes, it generates all that stuff that you can go and, you know, use. Um, and it is pretty darn close to the point that I, I do a lot of writing for our, our, our other shows like post-production and mm-hmm. there's sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take it, I'll put it in there. I'll generate something. I'll tweak it. Cause again, it's not perfect. It may sound like it's AI. So I, t- I take the content, I mesh a few different things together. I put our voice, the show's voice, my voice, whatever it is into it. So it, it is, it is really at the end of the day, I'm t- taking the AI, AI and, you know, still changing the content. So it, you know, it doesn't look, you know crappy like AI sometimes, but, um, but some of it, like I've, I've taken it and se- I've sent it to, to some of our other producers and some of the hosts of the other shows. And I said, Hey, what do you think of this description? And 10 out, like almost every single time, dude, that's perfect. And I was like, Hey, did, I'm like, do you realize I never even listened to, to the episode? And he's like, huh? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And he's like, wait, you, you wrote that without, without listening to the episode. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't watch one second of your show. And he's mm-hmm. like, how did you do that? I'm like, well, AI. Um, so it, it, it's, it is, it is pretty darn good. Um, you know, so, okay, so podium, podium, the first one, and then yep. what's the second one? Um, so there's one, uh, and I, I forget the name of it cause I don't do like the, the video editing, but it's a plugin. Um, what's it called? I think it's called autopod actually. Auto, have you ever okay. heard of autopod? No, I haven't. Okay. So, um, autopod is, um, 
it's it's a, it's an AI for video. I think it's uh, I think it's an Adobe um, base. And forgive me for not knowing enough because I'm I'm not I'm not an editor by any means. I never have and I probably never will. It's not my skill set. That's why. I, I got the team, That's right? That's fine. Just, just yep. fire off what you know in a few sentences. So, yeah, so, so Autopod, but Autopod, by the way, if you have a multi, multi-cam setup, this is where it really comes in handy. So instead of having a producer sit on the show and toggle back and forth, camera, camera, whether it's two or three cameras, Autopod does all that for you in post-production. So you take, mm. you take, so you have three different cam, three different angles. You, you take the footage from each of those cameras, you, you plug it into, into this, this software, which I think runs in conjunction with whatever the Adobe editing video software is, Premiere Pro, I think. It runs with that. You plug it in. It'll literally cut together uh, and and do all the camera switching based on who's talking. It'll take an hour episode and it'll cut the entire thing together for you in about 17 seconds. Wow, that's crazy. That's- Riverside does something similar as well. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so we've got Podium, Autopod. What's the third? I mean, I'll, I'll throw Riverside in there or StreamYard. Like, I, like I, I've used okay. StreamYard myself, so like StreamYard's another good one. Um, so again, same thing, like whether it's Riverside or StreamYard, and I know there's a couple others cause I, I pretty much tried them all out. Um, but mm-hmm. again, they're all phenomenal tools. Uh, an- another one that like I recently started using, and honestly, I've done so much research on some of these, by the way, I feel like I found some of the best ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this one's called Vizard. V-I-Z. Yeah. V-I-Z-A-R-D. Uh, and I, I'm, it's probably vizard.com, but if you just Google it, you'll probably find it. Again, it's another AI software program that you can take. You literally don't even have to have access to the original raw file, which is which is phenomenal. So mm. if you, all you all you need is the YouTube link. So you can take any YouTube video. Now again, you know, uh, you, use at your own discretion. Don't steal anybody else's content, copyright, all that. I, I, of course, we use it responsibly. But you can you can take a all you need is the YouTube link from any you know you know from your podcast from your episode. You plug it into Vizard. And Vizard will automatically generate, just like Riverside, I think, and StreamYard does too. It'll automatically generate uh, clips. It'll put captions oh, cool. on there, right? So it'll it'll generate like thirty clips, like in ten seconds. It'll generate thirty clips, and it actually even ranks them on a, vi- a virality score from like one to ten. Oh, cool! How viral it thinks. Now, again, it's not perfect. A lot of it's subjective, um, but you can t- you can use those clips as is. You can tweak them. You can change them. You don't have to use any of them. You can go, you can then go in, even if you don't have, again, you don't even have access to the original raw file. You have the YouTube link put in there. You can still take any part of that video and clip any part of it that you want at all. Anything you want. Again, it's obviously, it's a paid thing. It doesn't cost Mm -hmm. much. Again, probably 30 bucks a month. But again, like that's another phenomenal uh, resource for podcasters or any, or actually any content creator. It doesn't even need to be a podcast. Any video that they can and get clips out of, it works. It works amazing. Of course, I that's still go in. Yeah. And get. That's why I yeah. said I use this for Riverside for long form videos as well. Like it just makes the clips. So that's really yeah. cool. So we've got Podium, Autopod, Riverside slash StreamYard, Vizard. Mm. And then what's the last one? Ooh, uh, I don't know if I have a fifth one. Hold on. I got to think about this for a second. Um, it can be a piece of equipment as well. Just like a piece of equipment. Where you're like, yeah, this is so good. I love this. Oh, uh, the caption captions app. Okay, so, captions. Even though, yep. Okay. So the, the app is literally called Captions. Mm-hmm. It's, in my opinion, it's the best hands down. It's backed by NVIDIA, which I don't know if you know anything about NVIDIA, but I own stock in NVIDIA. NVIDIA is like one of the best um, AI uh, chip makers out there. So uh, uh, cap the Captions app, on it's, it's on your phone. So again, like if you want to pull a clip from a, a podcast or it doesn't, again, it could be any piece of content and you want to put captions on it. Uh, the captions app is phenomenal. I think it's like fi- thirty or fifty dollars for a one year subscription. By the way, oh, that's so good, unbelievable. And I've said this so many times. Like, if they raised their price to like two hundred dollars a year, I would, I, I, in a blink of an eye, I'd say, ah, oh, well, that sucks. It went mm. from thirty to two hundred, but we're we're buying it because yeah, it it's by far the best caption app for any piece of content. It's nearly fly it's the it's nearly flawless. It's one of the best that can take anything you're saying. Even people with thick accents I've noticed it freaking nails it like really? every time. Yeah. It is That's like cool. the best. It's just called captions. I think it's like a purple little logo. Um but yeah, so even though even though like Vizard for example, as I just said like Vizard you can put the captions in it too. But like if you didn't, you know, again, you don't need to use both, but it, uh if if you didn't want to use Vizard and if you just had something you just want to put captions on, the cash, captions app is a phenomenal, phenomenal option. We, we use all of it, yeah. by the way. We use all of it in all different you know, senses. 
That's awesome because I use CapCut for captions, but always for clients, I'm going in, and, um, especially with short form, like and mm-hmm. editing out us. And then I do have clients with thicker accents as well. So I have to change the words and have to be like listening to it just to double check. I, I so those are awesome tools. I'm just going to run through, through them again. So Podium, Auto, what is it? Autopod, River, Riverside and StreamYard. I don't know why I was forgetting the one that I use the most. <laughs> Wizard, wizard, and then captions. Okay, captions. there are your five must-have podcast things. Yes. All, and very then, inex- all very inexpensive, super affordable. That's awesome. Okay, so then one final question. If yeah. you had one question to ask everyone who's listening, what would you ask? Mm. Ooh, that's a really good question. If I had one question t- to ask everybody, um, I, you know, I, I think I, something along the lines of... Um, Maybe like a two-parter. I'm just going to kind of talk it out loud. I'm just going to spitball here. Are you really happy doing what you're doing? And if you're not, what would you do differently? And what is your purpose in life? I think, and and again, that could be a question that somebody could just ask themselves. um, Because, you know, somebody, you know, for me, for example, like I've gone through, you know, a lot of ups and downs over the last, you know, several months or a couple of years of my life. And it made me rethink all of those things. It made me really rethink um, what am I doing? What am I doing this for? Who am I doing it for? What's my purpose in life? You know, what are my passions? What are my passions? Uh, where am I gaining energy? Where am I losing energy? Who am I surrounding myself with? All those things all kind of go into those two things. Like, so are you happy doing what you're doing? Um, and you know, what is your purpose? Like, I know everyone's gonna be like, well, I don't know what my purpose is and how do I find it? And I'll kind of leave that up, leave that up to the listener to sort of figure that out. But I think the biggest, the biggest thing to do is just really like look inward and just Mm -hmm. ask yourself, you gotta, you gotta be real with yourself. And this is like, I think there's so many people in the world right now that day in and day out really actually hate their job and just don't want to admit it. And the reason being is probably because they're making the big, good salary. And there's probably something else that they'd rather be doing that they may only make half the money or three quarters of the money. But I'll tell you what, as somebody who, you know, I've made, a, I made some decent money, you know, as in my career up to this point. And, you know, I, I, I hate, I hate, I, I, I hate when people say, oh, like money isn't everything. Cause it, it actually helps with a lot of things. Mm. But at the end of the day is, is, the, is all of the stress really worth it? It where, where you could just maybe, maybe you have to take a, a $20,000 pay cut to go do something that you absolutely love. Is the stress really worth that extra $20,000 or not? And like, right. and those are the questions I think more people need to ask themselves and, and I think more people just need to look look inward and um and just know that it's okay to take a step back in life personally and professionally. It's okay to take a step back because just like you're you're pulling back like a bow and arrow, the only mm-hmm. way to launch yourself forward sometimes is to is to pull back the arrow and let it go and 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 launch yourself. And and I think that's so true. And I think so many people, um, when you really figure out the answers to those questions, um, you may have to take a step back in a lot of things you're doing, but I think by doing that, the 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 upside is far greater uh, by just taking that step back because you're taking that step back, and the further you keep pulling it back, the further you keep pulling it back. And as soon as you hit that launch button, it's going to send you way further than you ever thought you could. Yeah, it's that whole delayed gratification piece, and I love what you said about money, right? Because I saw Ed Milet speak in person last week, and something that he said awesome. he was like, "Being rich isn't as good as you think, but being poor is a lot worse." than you would think. So money definitely plays a role in our security and where we're going to go. And the, it was so funny as well, what you said about purpose, because I feel like I'm quite clear on my purpose. You know, I really just want to serve others. And for me, I'm, I'm Christian. So I want to live for the Lord and stuff like that, follow the commandments. Um, but I was on a date. <laughs> I was on a date a few weeks ago and I asked someone, I was like, what's your purpose? Just because I wanted to see if it aligned with mine. And they just went, huh, huh. I don't know. That's a deep question. So I would yeah. highly advise like figuring out your purpose because there is an answer out there and it doesn't have to be this concrete. I want to do X. I want to make X. I want to help X number. Like just think about who you want to be and what that kind of looks like and then you'll have your purpose kind of figured out from there but honestly it was so good to have you on the show bill such an interesting guy i think this is my longest episode ever actually i just let you keep on talking because i was like oh i feel like i'm learning something here cool i appreciate it i I, laura thank you so much for having me on like this is a great experience and um you know i just i i love 
it, it's obviously, you know, as you probably know, um, it's so it's cool to be on the other side of the mic because for the longest time, yeah. I, like I said, I've done over 200 episodes and it's not, I, I'm starting to put myself out there more, which I haven't done a lot of, I haven't done enough of. So mm-hmm. I'm super grateful for the opportunity today to, to be on your podcast. I'm really looking forward to, you know, everyone hearing it, listening and watching it and, and, you know, getting some feedback. And if, if there's anybody that wants to connect with me, please do so. Uh, but again, like I'm just I'm super grateful being on being on this side of the mic and just being able to support you and other podcasters. Um, I think we have such a cool community. And uh, I just want to, again, I, I can't thank you enough for having me on today. Yeah, appreciate you, man. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too.